Item 8.4, ladies and gentlemen, is the Audit Committee report. And this uh, appears in the report that Mr. Creswell has circulated. And this deals with the work in terms of the Companies Act. Uh, my colleagues have reviewed it and uh, they are comfortable therewith. Are there any additional comments? Mr. Patel, from an external audit point of view, is there anything that we could subtract from this report? No, sir. Is there anything we can add? No, sir. This report is fine. Thank you. Good. Can we agree to that? I'll sign it on behalf of the committee. Item 8.5 and 8.6 deal with the compliance sign-off and the memorandum of incorporation. Ms. van der Merwe, thanks very much for these detailed reports. Let's hand over to you to address each of these items. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I will take the report as read. Um, as you know, as an annual practice as part of our annual work plan, it's important for us to look at compliance so that one can also give the comfort to the board that there is sufficient oversight over compliance in the organisation. Um, we've actually indicated the issues that were formed part of the compliance overview. They've been uh, noted and listed in the report. And unless there are any questions, Chair, I'll take that as, as read. Thank you. Thank you. These are new documents. We really appreciate the efforts that you've gone to to support the primary report with the various annexures. And what I think is quite revealing uh, and which was uh, commended by my colleagues is the report that deals with the retention of documents and the period for which. And we certainly appreciate that and we will use that uh, at the other boards that we are associated with. Questions, ladies? Good, thank you. Talk to us on the Chairman, Memorandum of Incorporation. Yes, if we can talk about the, the Memorandum of Incorporation. As you know, from a process point of view, the draft was prepared and then submitted to shareholders for input and comment. The document, as it's included in your packs, contains also includes the, the comments that were received from the shareholders. Chairman, there's one issue which I would like to raise, which personally um, I have a concern with, and I would like to, to flag this to the Audit Committee as well. As you know, uh, in terms of the New Companies Act, the um, Director's authority can only be limited either in terms of the Act or in terms of the Memorandum of Incorporation. And so our schedule to our MOI contains certain limitations on Director's authority, one of which, uh, an item which was uh, um, included by the shareholder C11, on page 11 of 11 uh, of the MOI, the approval of any distribution. Chairman, I'm um, from a board point of view a bit concerned about the, the wording of this specific item. You know, in terms of section 45, 46, the uh, board before approving a distribution has to consider solvency and liquidity. And so therefore I would like to suggest that we recommend to the board that maybe the chairman of the board interact with, with shareholders to explain this position so that we can get some compromise on the wording so that the, the directors are not put in a position where they can't comply with their statutory duties. Okay, we'll raise this at the board meeting and uh, you can assist the chair to <coughs> approach our major shareholders so that it enjoys smooth passage at the AGM. Members, any issues on the MOI? Thank you. Chair, I'd just like to check whether we haven't made an error in 1.1 on page 2 of the logo. Um, the introduction and incorporation where we talk about the company being previously yes. a public. Yes, Chairman, sir. That was with the, the, uh, yes. the drafts going backwards and forwards. Yeah. That will be corrected before it is submitted to the Good. AGM. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, we've addressed item 8. If we move to item 9, the first is the management representation letter. Uh, Mr. Cresswell, we've read the letter, and Mr. Patel, but Mr. Cresswell, can you give us the comfort that there isn't anything unusual or is going to be uh, negative from the Audit Committee or the Board point of view in uh, the contents and the sign-off uh, of that letter and uh, submission to our external auditors? Mr. Chairman, I can confirm that I've read the letter and I'm, I'm comfortable um, with, with the terms that are in it. Um, there's nothing in here that I'd like to highlight um, that I see as being um, a problem, so I'm comfortable for, for us to sign that off. So, members of the Audit Committee, can we recommend that the CFO and the CEO sign the management representation letter on behalf of Transformation Limited? Chair, Good. Can we just check with the external auditor that he's happy that there's nothing that he wanted to add that management were not happy with in the management letter? Um, Chair, we're happy with the management that it's yeah. contra or technical. Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Creswell, if you can talk to us about solvency and liquidity, and then what uh, most shareholders salivate over is the declaration and payment of a dividend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, obviously, in terms of Section 46, um, when we're making distributions, we need to um, consider the solvency and the liquidity. Obviously, from a solvency point of view, we need to um, ensure that the assets are fairly, fairly valued, exceed the liabilities that are fairly valued. Um, from a liquidity point of view, we obviously need to look at whether we can settle the debts as due in the ordinary course of business over the next 12 months. Um, and I have prepared a document um, that is in the file. Um, I, uh, in, in the document, you'll see there the net current assets um, currently at 68 million um, compared to the prior year of 55. Um, the net asset value is um, 84 million uh, compared to the prior year of 69. Our cash and cash equivalents um, are 34 million, um, and the earnings before interest and tax was 22 million. The dividend proposed was 700,000 um, rand, and um, we have done a detailed cash flow um, uh, uh, forecast over the next 12 months um, to look at whether or not um, we can meet our, our, our uh, um, liabilities as they fall due, and I'm comfortable um, that we're, we're, we're covered in that regard. Members of the Audit Committee, can we minute the solvency and liquidity test? and uh, our acceptance thereof and recommendation to the board. Okay, you want to talk further on the dividend that we wish to declare? Um, the dividend um, that was declared um, was um, 25 cents um, per share. Um, there was also an interim dividend um, also of um, 25 cents per share. Um, there's nothing further that I'd like to add to that. All right, secretary, you'll include this in the circular to the shareholders. Thank you. Further discussion? All right, combined assurance, we've spoken earlier on, Mr. Naika, about the three lines of defense, and uh, this is a best practice that's contained in Chapter 3 of the King Report. If you could give us high-level feedback that it is working as intended. Chair, without repeating what's already been said, uh, I think I'll just confirm, having tested, that the framework has been defined, the assurance providers have been defined, they've been accordingly allocated, in terms of the control processes and the risk profiles, and they will be expected to report in accordance with the timetables and provide the necessary feedback. Thank you. Members of the Audit Committee, any further questions for Mr. Nyker? Thank you. External audit, internal audit, you're comfortable with that? CFO, CEO, excellent, thank you. If we look at uh, item 10, ladies and gentlemen, that deals with the charters, we have circulated this previously. This is the final version of the internal audit charter. Are there any further improvements that any of you wish to effect? Mr. Hachter, is there anything else that we need to include from a best practice point of view? No, Chair, I believe that this is sort of at the edge of best practice as it's written here. Good, so can we agree to that, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. The approval of the Audit Committee Charter, that has been circulated. Mr. Patel, how do you feel about the contents and uh, the comprehensiveness thereof. Chair, we're happy with it, uh, and we'd just like to commend uh, management and the audit committee that it definitely meets benchmarks in the, on the audit committee charter. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Creswell. Thanks, Ms. Palmer. We appreciate that. Can we approve this, the audit committee charter? Yes, Thank you. Chairman, if I may, I think what we have noted that we would recommend it to the board for formal approval, and can I just report back then, based on that, once the charter is approved, at the next meeting, we will submit the annual work plan of the committee based on the, uh, the chart. Thank you, much appreciated. Item 11, ladies and gentlemen, deals with the assessment of the effectiveness of the audit committee. What I propose is that each one of us around the table, ladies and gentlemen, including our risk manager, internal audit completes this uh, in detail and then submits it to the company secretary that will aggregate the results and I will meet with her, get a summary and we will table the findings and the gap analysis at the next audit committee meeting. Do I have approval thereof? I just wish to verify, Chair, you want the internal audit to complete this as well. I think it's important from a, an assurance point of view, Mr. Hector, we are assessing the effectiveness of the audit committee. So the components of the audit committee is external audit, internal audit, risk, the CFO, the controls under the uh, leadership of the CEO. So we want a comprehensive feedback. Just not to only include the members of the audit committee because we want to assess this from uh, an overall uh, group and company point of view. Very well. Thank you for that. 